What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. I believe in storytelling because um, ever since we were younger, I think we're grown up kids, right? Mm -hmm. But ever since we were younger, stories and narratives have been a part of the fabric of how we learned. And a story has a beginning, middle, and an end. Socrates invented the three act play. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's always conflict, uh, there's always a resolution. Sometimes there's not. But the great movies and the great TV series, there's always some sort of a resolution and a hero's journey, whether it's, you know, the, the Hobbit series or if it's Star Wars or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe in storytelling and seeding through storytelling because people can't disagree with the story. Mm -hmm. So when I'm teaching marketing, I tell a very simple story that happened in 1972. I was eight years old and I was a Cub Scout. And. I'll give you the theme and the moral of the story, and that is how to become a world-class marketer. So th that's the theme. Now, I don't say that in the beginning right. because it kind of gives it away, but that's the moral. So here's the story, and it takes about 300 seconds. So I'm with my dad, George, and I'm at Allendale, Al Allendale Elementary. That's where I was, and it was 1972. I was eight years old, and I'm a Cub Scout. Now, a Cub Scout is a mini Boy Scout. And that's far cry from Eagle Scout, which is the highest level. And I'm sure there's other scouts other than that. And we were there. We're sitting in this auditorium uh, and it was a grammar school I attended. Mm -hmm. And I was there with my next door neighbor, Billy. And we're listening to a pitch by one of the parents who's so excited because they're going to have a fundraiser. And they're selling these boxes of chocolate chip cookies, which are one dollar. This is 1972. That's kind of like five dollars today. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens is the the chocolate chip uh, cookie manufacturer, they make 50 cents off of the box. And then the, the troop makes 50 cents. And then that way we go on all these excursions and um, we, we go on field trips and things like that. So now we have a competition. And if you're a parent and you're listening or watching this, you know that anytime your child, no matter how old, they have a fundraiser, they don't sell shit. You're the one selling all the stuff in the office to your family, to your friends, whatever, right? They, they yep. just say, hey, hey, mom, dad, you know, sell it for me. That wasn't me because my dad was an engineer, terrible salesperson. <laughs> my, my mom was a teacher and she said, I'm not going to do that. So I listened to it. And the bottom line was whoever sold the most, most boxes of chocolate chip cookies for that particular troop at Allendale Elementary in 1972 would go to Disneyland and they take a friend with them. So I did a joint venture. I went to my, my buddy, Billy. I said, hey, Billy, if you win, you take me. If I win, I'll take you. Deal? And we said, deal. So um, we went off and we had our own technique. So here's what Billy did. He's my next door neighbor. So right away, without any plan, like most marketers, without zero plan, he said, I'm just going to talk to as many people as I can. Hmm. Not qualified, not disqualified. And he, he rode his bike and he went down Oak, uh, Oak Knoll Avenue, which is in Pasadena, California, where we live and then down Hill Avenue, then Oakland Avenue, then Madison Avenue, not in New York City, but in Pasadena. And so he, he went to like uh, 50 homes and he'd knock on the door and they open the door. He doesn't know who's behind there, right? So there's kind of, there's a guy in a, like a wife beater t-shirt he's unemployed, uh -huh. he's drinking a beer. He goes, what? And Billy says, hey, would you buy a box of chocolate chip cookies? Boom, the door gets slammed shut. Of course, Billy now needs therapy. He goes to the <laughs> next house. Would you like to buy a box of chocolate chip cookies? No answer. He goes to the third house. There, there's a, a little girl, like six years old. It's summer, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you like to buy a chocolate chip cookie? She goes, yeah. Do you have any <laughs> money? No. <laughs> it's qualified. Yeah. It's qualified. So finally, after 50 homes, he sold five boxes. Mm -hmm. And so he comes back and he sold, I, I sold five boxes. I said, you lost five pounds riding your bike. You sold five boxes? That's it? <laughs> I, I, I got to pull all the weight now? He goes, yeah. I, did, I mean, they didn't want to buy. I said, all right, fine. Mm -hmm. And so I want to go to Disneyland. I've been there before, but not with friends, just with relatives. And that's boring, right? Mm -hmm. So we live in Pasadena. It's about 45 minutes away. I just wanted to go with Billy because it would be super fun. Mm -hmm. So then um, I had a plan. So I'm going to do a quick pop quiz. So I had this box and it, it had a gross, which is 144 boxes of chocolate chip cookies. And my mom took her book. And we went to a store. Now, I wanted to get people who were already in the position to buy. There was mm. already traffic. So I know that store must have paid money to get people into that parking lot. So I'm not going to tell you what kind of store it was, 
But did I get people on the way in or did I did I pitch them on the way out? What do you think, guys? I think you were pitching them on the way in. Why is that? Because they haven't purchased yet. Yes, they yes. haven't purchased yet. So I'm getting wallet share before they even go in. I'm poaching <laughs> ethically. They don't even let you do this these days, right? Nope. So then was I in front of a hardware store? Was Doubt I in it. front of a drug store or in front of a grocery mm. store? Which one? <laughs> grocery I'm store. I'm grocery store. Not organic. Matt, what do you think? There was no I'm, organic back then. It was 1972, I, man. I yeah, th this is also pre-dispensaries, too. So you probably weren't in front of a dispensary. Oh. <laughs> uh, but grocery store would be my guess. <laughs> grocery store. You know, we, we had private dispensaries back then, right? <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> so, so then I'm getting it in front of a grocery store where they may buy cookies, right? Mm. Now, now I have to make an offer. So I got my target audience, okay? They're pre-qualified. Yep. They're definitely pre-qualified. I've disqualified hammer and nails people at hardware. Mm -hmm. I pre I've, I've disqualified all the, you know, shampoo and the, the uh, prescription people at the drugstore. Yep. Mm -hmm. Back then, grocery stores didn't have drugstores in the back like they do right. today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I stood in front, now I had to make an offer. Now the offer I'm gonna make is not to sell one freaking box. I want to sell five because if I go for five, I can downsell them to three. If they say no to three, maybe I'll get one. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. in one sale, I can outsell Billy <laughs> just standing in the way of traffic, which Internet and digital marketers do right now. All yeah. they're doing is channeling demand. OK, so I stood there. Now I have to make an offer. Now, I didn't I hadn't read Bob Cialdini's book, Influence. I, I just met with him um, a couple of days ago at a mastermind mm -hmm. and um, the 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 principle of contrast is what I utilized as an eight year old, but I didn't realize I was utilizing that. I just want to go to freaking Disneyland, right? <laughs> so Billy's not even there. It's just me and my mom is reading a book on a bench nearby. So I'm I'm standing out there. I don't have my product in front of me. The product is near the bench because you know I don't want to give it away, right? Because they'll they'll avoid me. Mm -hmm. So someone's coming in and I say, "Sir," he says, "Yeah, you're a cute kid. Thank you." Uh, would you like to donate $50 to the Cub Scouts of America, sir? Now, 50 bucks is $500 in 1972, right? <laughs> so big and, ask. And, yeah. and he looks at me, taps me on the head. He says, no. And then I give him my puppy dog eyes. Please, sir, <laughs> $50, that's it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tax deductible, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I knew that they would say what? Yes or no? I knew that they would say no. Heck no. no. Yeah. I, I wasn't rejected. You see the difference? I knew yeah. they would say no. And I, I went for a second close and I knew they would say no. Then I tugged on whatever they were wearing, right? And I'd say, sir, would you at least buy five boxes of chocolate chip cookies so I can go to Disneyland with my friend, Billy? <laughs> and one out of three said yes to five boxes. <laughs> <laughs> one out of three. Wow. One out of three. Of the people who said no, I downsold them to three and I usually sold one. Yeah. Within two hours, all 144 were gone. I was there for three hours. I was doing freaking IOUs and my poor mom had to drop <laughs> them off at their homes and shit like that. Yeah. It was amazing. We went to Disneyland and here's the most incredible thing. Every person in the Cub Scout troop knew what I did. <laughs> Everyone. And the next year, because we had one more year, I was nine. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing. Billy was knocking on doors. Jeez. Everyone else was doing the shit that they were doing. And then we went again because of me. <laughs> now, isn't that ironic that a lot of our colleagues and Internet marketers and digital marketers, even human beings, they don't do the things that work. They want to try something original and originality, said Rosser Reeves, who is the inventor of the unique selling proposition. He said the most dangerous word in marketing and advertising is originality mm -hmm. because it's something unique. You're not rechanneling demand, you're creating demand and you can't do that. So Billy was creating demand by going door to door. I was just rechanneling and said, buy from me before you go in the store. And we went to Disneyland not once, but twice, not because I was smart, it was just <laughs> common sense. And so that's a story. Now, when I say, what does that mean to you? That means anyone can market.